So in this problem, we'll do a thermal analysis of this rod. And the rod is fixed at both this end and this end. And we'll start out at room temperature. And then we'll heat up this end to some uh, high temperature and this end to some other uh, cooler temperature. And when we heat it up, it causes the rod to expand, or the rod tries to expand or get longer. But it can't because it's uh, restrained at the left and the right side. And that heating causes a uh, normal stress to develop in the rod and it'll be a compressive normal stress because the rod wants to get longer but it can't. So I'll show you first uh, a way not to do this, an incorrect way, and then I'll show you the correct way to do it. But when we heat it up there ought to be a, a linear temperature change between this face and this face. I've already set the material uh, to copper and the temptation will go simulation and we'll do a new study and a new static study. We'll click OK. And we'll do fixed geometries. I'll fix this side and this side. And now, remember, this is not this is what you're you shouldn't do. But we can all, we have you have access to temperature. So I'll click this face, and I'll say in Fahrenheit. Let's say this face is 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and this face will set at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And when I run it, you will get a result. And this exaggerated result, if I go uh, edit definition, we'll call it the true scale, it's not doing what you think it's doing. What happened is you set the temperature here at the skin, and it didn't do anything. It didn't change any temperatures within the body itself. So you change the temperature of the skin here and the skin here, but you didn't make any changes to the body. And it turns out we can go external loads, thermal effects, and what you actually did Un, uh, unknowingly was set the temperature to 298 Kelvin or in Fahrenheit the original temperature was 76 degrees and in essence what you've done is heated the rod up from 76 degrees up to the two points at the ends of the rod so you didn't actually do any heat transfer calculations throughout the body so let's delete this simulation we'll start start from scratch here let's begin with a thermal analysis we'll go new study and a thermal analysis I'll again set my uh, thermal loads. Let's set this at uh, in Fahrenheit. I'll go. I'll call that 300 degrees. This one I'll set to 400 degrees, and click OK. And now I'll run this simulation. And it'll tell me the temperature across the entire rod. So what I'm observing, which looks to be correct, this rainbow shape. It's a high temperature here. This is saying, uh, you know, high end of or this is reporting in Calvin, let's right click here, go L edit definition, and let's report it in Fahrenheit. And I've got 400 on the left, and at the right side of the rod it's 300, and there's a linear trend between the two. So now what I've done, what I do have is temperatures throughout the body, and we'll bring that into the static analysis. So go study advisor, new study, and a new static study, and here again we'll fix, uh, we'll do a fixed geometry on this face and on this face. What you need to do now is tell it at what temperature the bar is not strained. So we need to give it an initial temperature. And let's say the initial temperature is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll say under that there is no compressive stress. The thing is completely unstrained. So I'll go external loads, thermal effects, and I'll bring in the temperatures from the thermal study and I'll set this, we'll say the unstrained temperature is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Bring in all of the data that we've got from the thermal study throughout the body. And now I'll run this simulation. In this exaggerated result, what it's showing you, or showing us, is that the body, it did expand in this region. Remember, I fixed the geometry at this face, but it expanded a little bit, but more on the right hand side of it, because the temperature over here is hotter, there tends to be a greater deal of uh, expansion on the right hand side. And it did propagate the temperatures through it. If we go here, right click, edit definition, we really want the normal stress in the Z direction for this type of problem. We'll click true scale and click OK. What we observe is through the uh, outside of the end effects, it's pretty u the, the stress is fairly uniform across the cross section of the middle of the rod. It's tough to see what the actual stress and the temperatures are though across the rod, so we'll set up a couple of sensors to, to make those readings. To do that, I'll go back to model 
and let's do a reference geometry. We'll do a point, and the point that we'll do is right at the origin. So we'll set, a, we'll put a thermometer here and a stress tensor, or a stress uh, sensor. We'll add a sensor. Let's do, so bring it in from the simulation data. The first one we'll do, let's do thermal. We'll do, we'll capture temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll say max over the selected entities. And we'll just click 0.1 there. So there's a, a thermometer. And I'll click OK. When I rerun, uh, if I go back to the thermal study, it indeed, it indeed tells me that the temperature at the midpoint of the rod is 350, which is good. It's a linear relationship between what I've set at the right-hand side is 300 and 400 degrees at the other side. So a linear trend, 350 right at the midpoint. So it, it seems like the thermal analysis is doing its job. So we'll go back. Let's add another sensor, simulation data. We'll take stress. We'll take the normal stress in the z direction reported in Pascal, max over selected entities, and we'll report it at 0.1. So that'll give me the stress there. I'll go into the uh, static analysis, and I get a stress. It's a negative value, and the negative value suggests that it uh, that it ought to be under compression, which I would agree with. You heat something up, tries to get longer. We're preventing it from getting longer, and that causes a compressive stress. So we could read off the stress here is 3.7 times 10 to the eighth Pascal. So that's a way to incorporate a thermal analysis in with your static analysis. Just be careful that you don't try to integrate everything into the static analysis before doing the thermal analysis.